start with our mangalacharan and then we'll dive into our today's beautiful verses of this chapter 15 first canto pandavas retired timely hare krishna om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om gyanati virandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshiro anuritam yena tasmay shri guruvai namo shri chaitanya mana avishtam sabitam yena utale swayam rupa kadamayam dadati swapadantikam vandeyam shri guru shivatu padakamanam shri guru vishnuvam shri rupam sagaraja श्री राधा कृष्ण पदान सगन ललिता शेषगणतम से हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दिन जगत पते रात वृंदा वनेश्वरी ऋषिवानु सुते देखि पण मी हरि पिये वंचक पुत्र रोग से Hare Krishna, Prabhu, Dandot Pranam. Prabhu, there seems to be some uh, network lag at your end. Um, the network signal against your profile is also showing yellow color. Any possibility that you can move closer to the Wi-Fi or something like that? Mm, uh, I'll try, Prabhu. Uh, any audio breakage or something is happening, Prabhu? Yes. And the video and audio are also not in sync. Okay. Okay, bro. Just give me two minutes. I'll just settle. Hare Krishna, bro. Now it's fine? Yes, looks like. Yeah, yeah, bro. It is fine now. It has turned white also now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So, everybody can see my screen, right? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Thank you so much, bro. Hare Krishna. So, today we are reading from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter 15. The Pandavas, the chapter is entitled as Pandavas Retired Timely. So this is a very uh, wonderful chapter, especially for us. Uh, it gives a, a set of teachings through which we can also retire timely. And not only that, how we should retire, this has also been very nicely explained through the teachings of or the through the uh, life events of this Pandavas. So before going further, will uh, meditate upon a verse of uh, this beautiful Srimad Bhagavatam, in, which comes in the uh, first canto itself. So this is a very nice verse through which we can, you know, uh, start this uh, wonderful Srimad Bhagavatam's uh, 
glorification and with which it will be very it will give us a nice boost of enthusiasm and we will go further so there is a very beautiful nice verse in second canto of shrimad bhagavatam where this saunak rishi is glorifying uh, shuddha goswami and he is glorifying bhagavatam so the verse goes like this ayur harati vaipum sam udyan ashtanchaya nasau tasya artha yachano ita uttam shloka vartaya so when we hear such glories of shrimad bhagavatam then you know we are also encouraged to hear to read and to meditate upon this beautiful shrimad bhagavatam so it says ayur harati vaipum sam that the the lives of the people is getting shortened in the age of kaliyuga ayur harati vaipum sam how through the rising and setting of the moon the life span of all the human beings or all the living entities is decreasing day by day but still we are celebrating happy birthday right so this is a very uh, mirror reflection which shrimad bhagavatam is giving us in this form of verse ayur harati vaipum sam udyan ashtan chayanaso with the setting and rising of the moon the life span of the conditioned living beings in this material world is decreasing day by day but tasya arthe yachano nita uttama shloka vartaya but only one person is not affected by this uh, decreasing of life span tasya arthe yachano nita uttama shloka vartaya and that exception is who is constantly engaged in glorifying the uttama shloka uttama shloka means the lord in whose glorification we do with the choices verses उत्तम श्लोक उत्तम श्लोकों के साथ जब हम भगवान का गुणगान करते सो दैट्स द लॉर्ड इज नोन एज उत्तम श्लोक और अनादर मीनिंग इज दैट दैट विद द चॉइसेस वर्सेस विद यू नो उत्तम उत्तम श्लोकास विद व्हेन वी डू द पोएट्री ऑफ द लॉर्ड और व्हेन वी डू द ग्लोरिफिकेशन ऑफ लॉर्ड दैट इज आल्सो नोन एज द उत्तम श्लोक सो उत्तम श्लोक वार्ता है तो जो उत्तम श्लोकों की वार्ता करता है या कथा करता है या कथा श्रवण करता है या पठन करता है अध्ययन करता है सो फॉर हिम there is no decrease of the life span but uh, so, but uh, some of you will tell oh, prabhu we are also getting old we are also getting old okay we are also uh, facing this health issues uh, birth bo- old age disease and death we, all these four problems are the people outside are also facing and we the practicing devotees are also facing so how can we understand so uh, so the acharyas gives very nice uh, understanding and teaching for this that how we can understand this as so shila prabhupad gives us a very nice example at as a, a cat having a mouse inside his mouth and uh, similarly one other analogy is a, a cat having a kitten baby cat in her mouth so from if we look at both these pictures then we will see you know in the in the cat, in the mouth of cat there is a rat also mouse and in the uh, mouth of cat there is a kitten also both seems it has been this uh, cat is going to devour or going to eat both of them but it's not like that the rat of course it is a food for the cat and the cat is going to eat it in a meal while in a mean while but when she is carrying the kitten in her mouth that means she is taking her safely from one place to another so similarly the devotee's life is also like this so even though they are getting old but the lord is always protecting and the devotee is always practicing practicing so that he can become he can go closer to the lord and at the end of his life he can go back home back to god and as the sun is rising and setting like we you know sometimes with a straw we sip some juice like this so in a similar way the sun with the rising and setting is taking the lives of all the people so if we engage ourselves in hearing chanting and remembering and reading of the glories of shrimad bhagavatam and the beautiful pastimes such as pandavas who are very dear to krishna then we will be also uh, will be also become that exception who can Uh, go beyond this condition life and we can also go back home back to god it and like the pandavas retired timely and they attain their life perfection so similarly just by reading shrimad bhagavatam and hearing about their beautiful pastimes of the lord we can also attain this perfection 
okay so we'll start with our first verse of today text number 10 patnyas tavadi makha klipa klipta mahabhishek slagist charu kavaram kita vai savayam sprishtam vikiryo padayo patitashru mukhya yastat striyo akrita hate sabimukta keshah translation and purport by shla prupa jay shla prupa anybody would like to read it was he only who loosened the hair of all the wives of the miscreants who dared upon the cluster of your queen's hair which had been nicely dressed and sanctified for the great rajsurya sacrificial ceremony at that time she fell down at the feet of lord krishna with tears in her eyes queen draupadi had a beautiful bunch of hair which was sanctified in the ceremonial function of rajasurya yag but when she was lost in a bed durshatan put her glorified hair to insult her draupadi then fell down at the lotus feet of the lord krishna and lord krishna decided that all the wives of dushashan and company should have their hair loosened as a result of the battle of kurukshetra thus after the battle of kurukshetra after all the sons and grandsons of that class died in the battle all the wives of the family were obliged to loosen their hair as widows in all in other words all the wives of the kuru family became widows because of the dushashans insulting a great devotee of the lord the lord can tolerate insults upon himself by by any miscreant but the the father tolerates never the father tolerates even insults from the son but he never tolerates insults upon his devotee by insulting a great soul one has to forego all the results of pious act and benedictions of hari krishna thank you prabhu hari krishna yeah so this arjuna he is now in front of yudhishthir maharaj and bhimsen so now since lord krishna has been disappeared krishna so dham pagate dharma gyana dibisa kala unashta drishyam esha purana arko aduna odito so as krishna has disappeared from this world and similarly as krishna left from this world dharma gyana and all the vedic principles are also went back home back to godhead with him so the people in this age of kaliyuga were misled they lost their actual vision to see the things as it is and to give them the light to give them the knowledge and the principles of shrimad bhagavatam appeared as the beautiful sun arjuna went to dwarka in search of him and he couldn't find krishna and then he as he heard that krishna also disappeared and simultaneously in the hastinapur in the uh, maharaj yudhishthir's palace he he has observed so many omens uh, because of krishna's disappearance of course uh, vidurji also knew but he didn't uh, told this thing to uh, uh, yudhishthir maharaj similarly yudhishthir maharaj also uh, narad muni also gave him hint uh, when dhritarashtra was uh, when dhritarashtra went uh, outside for tapasya so after that this yudhishthir maharaj saw this all these women's omens bad omens like deities are crying and uh, there is uh, so much rainfall and all this so then arjuna and he is waiting for arjuna as he was speaking to bhimsen and as arjuna arrives so he now tells about his uh, he, he remembers now and he remembers and he tells about his intimate connections with krishna and the association which all they had so now this was talks about the draupadi so draupadi the very chest lady of the vedic history she is one of the uh, you know a very pious and a devoted lady of uh, of the in the history of this world because she was having her five husbands and she was chaste to each and every husband and not only that after the in the rajasya sacrifice her you know beautiful hair were sanctified and after this rajasya sacrifice uh, due to this uh, duryodhan when he you know uh, thinking it is a land he fell down in the water and that's why everybody uh, laughed at him so at that time you know he took a, uh, he was quite envious about the pandavas and the draupadi 
so due to that thing so he decided that one day i will teach this a lesson to all the pandavas and especially draupadi so in this way uh, it has been uh, so that's why this particular grudge and envy this duryodhana was crying uh, carrying in his heart and in the and when the yudhishthira maharaj has been called for this gambling match for kshatriyas to play the gambling match uh, there is no any objection but when a man kshatriya challenges other kshatriya then he has to come and play as a matter of etiquette or as a matter of respect so that's why like if somebody invites you for a war then you cannot deny a kshatriya so similarly for gambling match this yudhishthira maharaj also couldn't deny and and he went there and he lost all his uh, of course we know from the mahabharata story that he lost everything and at last uh, he lost his uh, this chest wipe also dropadi and then dushasan and duryodhana uh, duryodhana sent uh, dushasan you know to bring dropadi so dushasan brings dropadi by snatching her hair and he drags him in the whole assembly of all the ministers and of all the kings who are present there in front of them and humiliates dropati and because of that because the lord is always surrendered to his devotees aham bhakta paradi you know he ashwantara eva drija sadhu vir vastar dayo that he is always been haunted with the vaishnavas or devotees like we are always haunted by you know rahu ketu or some other uh, graha but lord is always haunted by his beautiful devotees unalloyed devotees to jo bhagwan ki chinta karte hai bhagwan unki chinta karte hai so as draupadi who fully surrendered to the lord and the lord protected her and at that time only the lord took a vow you know to loosen all the hair of the wives of the kauravas because in the earlier days nowadays we cannot comment but in earlier days only the women who are widowed or who have lost their husbands they are only allowed to lose on their hair otherwise as a matter of etiquette all the ladies all the females used to tie their hair but nowadays we see everybody is losing their uh, hair and they are keeping it you know scattered like this but in the earlier days especially in our culture in our vedic civilization this humans uh, women's are supposed to tie their hair at every time if she is widow then she has to leave her hair like this like scattered so this was the etiquette and so that's why it has been said uh, said here that all the wives of the uh, kauravas had to you know uh, loosen their hair because in the battlefield of kurukshetra except the five pandavas and the few other you know like kripachari and other uh, some few members of uh, kauravas everybody died in the battlefield of kurukshetra and because of that duryodhana's uh, dhritarashtra's sons grandsons his uh, dhritarashtra's uh, son in law jayadrat they were all been killed in the battlefield of kurukshetra and all the wives of the kauravas the female members of the kauravas had to loosen their hair because of their husband's death so the lord is always you know protects the one who takes his shelter but uh, in one of the daily quotes of param pujya his holiness radha goin swami maharaj he says that only in once in the history of time durvasa muni who approached the lord to protect him he took the shelter of the lord but the lord denied so this was the only first case in history where the lord denied no i can i cannot give you the shelter because the lord is only the shelter of everybody but when durvasa muni offended amrish maharaj he you know the lord didn't uh, felt good about it and even the durvasa muni went to brahma loka shiva loka and at last he went to vishnu loka also but still the lord to, didn't offered him respects and he told you can go from here because i will not be able to give you any shelter why because those devotees who are surrendered to me if you are offending them then it is as good as hurting me only because why because in my in the hearts of pure devotees i reside 
and in my heart the devotees reside so this is the in very strong connection between the lord and the devotees sometimes we say you know we have a beautiful connection with my wife and son but no apart from that of course this may be we have intimate connection but intimate connection with the lord is more much more better and much more higher than the connection with uh, our wife children or mera close friend so so that's why so this lord never tolerates any insult towards him by his uh, towards any devotee by other people so that's why the lord takes a uh, personal initiative to protect those devotees and he protected uh, maharaj ambish from all means from durvasa muni and similarly uh, there are many such examples where hiranyakashipu was also uh, this persecuting paralad maharaj and then the lord finally appeared to save his dear devotees okay we'll move on to the next verse 1511 यो नो जुगुपो वनायत दुरंत कृष्ण दुर्वा वसो अरिरचित दागुताग्र भुग्या साकना सृष्टम उपायुजस यतस्त्रिलोकीम त्रिप्तन अन्नमस्त सलीले विनी मग्न संगह तांसुन प्रपद पश्चल प्रपद जयश्ल प्रपद रिवर sumptuously fed and all other and all the three worlds were also satisfied purport durvasa muni ap durvasa muni a powerful mystic brahmana determined to observe the principle the principles of religion with great vows and under strict austerities his name is associated with many historical events and it appears that the great mystic could be both easily satisfied and easily annoyed like lord shiva when he was when he was satisfied he could do tremendous good to the survivor but if he was but he was but if he was dissatisfied he could bring about the greatest calamity kumari kunti and at her father's house used to sorry used to minister all kinds of services to all great brahmanas and being satisfied with her thank you with her good reception durvasa muni benedicted her with a powerful to call any demigod to uh, to call any demigod she desired it is understood that he was a plenary incarnation of lord shiva and thus he could be either easily satisfied or annoyed he was a great devotee of lord shiva and by lord shiva's order the, he accepted the priesthood of king uh, swetaketu because of the king's performance of sacrifice for 100 years sometimes he used to visit the parliamentary assembly of the heavenly kingdom of indradev he could travel in space by his great mystic powers and it it is understood that he had traveled a great distance through space even up to the vaikuntha planets beyond material space he traveled all these long distances within one year during the during his quarrel with king ambarish the great devotee of emperor of the world he had about 10000 disciples and and wherever he visited and became a guest of great kshatriya kings he used to be accompanied by a number of followers once he visited the house of duryodhana the enemy cousin of maharaj yudhishthira duryodhana was intelligent enough to satisfy the brahmanas by all means and the great rishi wanted to give some benediction to duryodhana duryodhan knew his mystic powers and he knew also that the mystic brahmana if dissatisfied could cause some havoc and thus he designed to engage the brahmana to show his wrath upon his enemy cousins the pandavas 
when the rishi wanted to award some benediction to duryodhana the latter with wish that he should visit the house of maharaj yudhishthir who was the eldest and chief among all his cousins but by his request he would go to him after he had finished his meals with his queen draupadi duryodhana knew that after draupadi's dinner it would be impossible for maharaj yudhishthir to receive such a large number of brahman guests and thus the rishi would be annoyed and would create some trouble for the cousin maharaj yudhishthir thus that was the plan of duryodhana the durvasa muni agreed to this proposal and approached to the king in exile according to the plan of duryodhana duryodhan after the king and draupadi had finished their meals on his arrival at the door on his arrival at the door maharaja yudhishthir he was at once well received with the king request him when and the king requested him to finish his noon time religious rites in the river for by that time the food stuff would be prepared durvasa muni along with his large number of disciples went to the went to take a bath in the river and maharaja yudhishthir was in great anxiety about his guest as long as draupadi had not taken her meals food could be served by any number of guests but the rishi by the plan of duryodhana reached there after draupadi had finished her meals when the devotees are put into difficulty they have an opportunity to recollect the lord with rapt attention so draupadi was thinking of lord krishna in that dangerous position and the all pervading lord could at once know the da- dangerous position of his devotees he therefore came there on the scene and asked draupadi to give whatever food she might have in her stock on her being so requested by the lord draupadi was sorrowful because the supreme lord asked her for some food and she was unable to supply it at that time she said to the lord that the mysterious dish which she had received from the sun god could supply any amount of food if she herself had not eaten but on that day she had already taken her meals and thus they were in danger by expressing her difficulties she began to cry before the before the lord as only a woman would do in such a position the lord however asked draupadi to bring up the cooking pots to see if there was any particle of food stuff left and on draupadi's doing so the lord found some particle of vegetable sticking to the pot the lord at once picked it up and ate it after doing so the lord asked draupadi to call for her guests the company of durvasa bhima was sent to call them from the river bhima said why are you delaying sirs come on the food is ready for you but the brahmanas because of the lord krishna's accepting a little particle of food felt sumptuously fed even while they were in the water they thought that since maharaj yudhishthir must have prepared many well, valuable dishes for them and since they were not hungry and could not eat the king would feel very sorry so it was better not to go there thus they decided to go away this incident proves that the lord is the greatest mystic and therefore he he is known as yogeshwara another instruction is that every householder must offer food to the lord and the result will be that everyone even a company of guests numbering 10000 will be satisfied because of the lord's being satisfied that is the way of devotional service hari krishna thank you thank you much hari krishna yes. so this is also very nice purport and the verse so in the last verse we discussed about the draupadi's uh, this thing draupadi was being insulted in the whole assembly of kurukshetra this kauravas and here also we see the same draupadi was again put into dis- the distress because of the arrival of atithi what does the atithi mean atithi bina kisi ke aa jana this is what we called as atithi so this durvasa muni with his 10000 disciples so whenever durvasa muni travels anywhere he you know takes his 10000 disciples along with him and uh, he earlier visited uh, duryodhana and duryodhana fed him 56 bhogas 56 offerings and this durvasa muni was very satisfied with duryodhana and durvasa durvasa muni is, is a saint is a rishi muni who can travel like narad muni to any part of the space 
so this is what the siddhis he has and he is also known as the incarnation of lord shiva so his vajradapi kathoram and kusuma dupi su komala so is he is as strong as or he is uh, as hard as the vajra the thunderbolt of indra and simultaneously he is as cool as the lotus flower so uh, when he visited Dur duryodhana so duryodhana satisfied him with all the beautiful offerings uh, to him and his disciples were all were satisfied and duryodhana durvasamuni wanted to give him some benediction so durvasamuni asked requested him to ask some for some benediction but uh, duryodhana being evil minded he didn't ask for his good but he asked for pandava's bad so this is uh, the mentality of a poor and miserly person whenever they get chance to go ahead they will not try to go ahead but they will try to pull the contemporary's leg this is what we called it as crab mentality you must have all must have seen crabs so whenever this crabs are being sold to other person the lid is uh, not closed by the person who is selling the crabs because why because no crab will allow the other crab to go out of the jar so that's why so there is no lid required to cover the jar so this is uh, so this is how the crabs are been uh, sold to one another because this is the crab mentality but if we but yudhishthira maharaj was all opposite he was a raj rishi he was saintly king so uh, if some, somebody tells that you know just increase your line without touching or how you can be better uh, without touching so this yudhishthira maharaj uh, gave us a very nice analogy that if you want to be ahead you work on yourself instead of pulling others so one time this uh, guru dron asked duryodhana to go in the in his hastinapur kingdom and to look, look for some better person who has you know all good qualities so so duryodhana goes and comes back in some time and he says gurudev i didn't find uh, any person other than me who is all good and full of good qualities so guru dron said okay very nice and then he requests mara yudhishthir to go and find for the most fallen person in the whole of the hastinapur so king yudhishthir maharaj when he got the order from his guru dron so he also went uh, to find such a fallen person so he met various people in his kingdom but still at the end of the day he comes back and submits to his gurudev that oh gurudev you have requested me to you know to look for some most fallen person but i am the most fallen person so he he says out of humility that to whom ever saw i always thought to see some faults in him but but even why because why i am seeing the faults in other because i have faults in myself so that's why i am the most fallen person so in this way from this example uh, this uh, guru dron identified that who is the wise person who can become king in the future so through this example so we can see that how yudhishthir maharaj was always surrendered and always trying to do selfless service but duryodhan he was neither surrendered and he was surrendered to his own false ego and he was always trying to uh, create some troubles for the pandavas so in this way so he, re he requested durvasamuni to visit pandavas and he told him that you kindly visit durvasamuni after the afternoon hours because he knew that during the day time this draupadi will uh, cook the food and she will uh, she will serve to the husband and and at the end of the day she will also have it and she has got a beautiful akshay patra from the sun god so this is what it has been said here that akshay patra because the akshay patra is the you know very uh, mysterious cooking pot that for any number of guests draupadi can cook the food without any hesitation but when the draupadi takes the food and then the akshay patra will not produce any food so so this was the trick in this akshay patra and after the draupadi had her meal during that particular day this durvasamuni and other 
disciples arrived and then yudhishthira maharaj requested him to you know to uh, to take some bath and do their gayatris and come so in the meantime uh, the uh, yudhishthira maharaj turned to draupadi and he informed about uh, the guest so draupadi she realized that i already finished my meal and now the saksha patra cannot produce any number of dishes so in this way she was trying and as she was crying and remembering the lord the lord appeared and the lord requested draupadi you know to feed him something because lord was also hungry so as he requested draupadi so draupadi again started to cry very loudly that oh krishna i don't have anything to feed feed this durvasa muni and his 10000 disciples and on, on the other hand you are trying you are asking me or you are pulling my leg you know to feed you that but i am left with nothing so the king uh, so the krishna request him that you bring your raksha patra i will look for something and then krishna you know sees a very nice uh, some say it is a particle of rice or some say it is a particle of spinach but whatever it is a little thing was there in the pot after the after she washed and kept it so the krishna had it and as the krishna had it and like we say uh, you know that he felt satisfied like daka raja na a kind of so similarly he felt that feeling of satisfaction and not only that all the demigods all the people in the world and the durvasa muni and that uh, is 10000 disciples all felt that you know pet to be bhar gaya now we cannot eat any much food now any more food now so in this way so then krishna request yudhishthira maharaj to send bhimsen and uh, when bhimsen was going so krishna told him are bhim don't go like this take a gada and then go why because uh, just to create the fear uh, fear and the flavor of you know has parihas so that's why so as bhim goes so bhim requests them that oh sages durvasa muni please finish your bath as the earliest and let's come for prasadam but durvasa muni knew that previously i offended a beautiful devotee of the lord amrish maharaj and if i go and not eat the prashad of maharaj yudhishthir who is also a great devotee of the lord then again the lord will not forgive me so durvasa uh durvasa muni with his 10000 disciples just runs away from that particular place but before that uh, uh, recently sarvabhauma pro came here and he was adding one more point to this particular story so then the durvasa muni so bhim took hold of durvasa muni and he requested durvasa muni that you are going without prashadam you are going without food this is not right for the uh, for us because if we will not serve you then how we will get your blessings so we need your blessing so that's why please come and honor the prasadam and then you please give us the blessing so that we can prosper in our life so durvasa muni says no no bhim my blessings are always with you and all the pandavas you don't worry everything good will happen to you but uh, still the bhimsena insists that you know you please give me one more benediction one more boon so durvasa muni says what it is i give you whatever you want so we bhim request that oh my dear durvasa rishi please give me a boon that you you see durvasa muni i am bhim i am rikodara i am fond of eating lots and lots of food so you please give me a boon that i and due to having lots of food i also go to uh, answer the nature's call so you give me a boon that i eat more and more and shakuni in hastinapur the mama shri of the kauravas duryodhana he goes to answer the nature's call again and again so for that I, so i will eat the food and he will go for the nature's call again and again so you please give me this benediction and durvasa muni says tathatsu and he runs uh, with his 10000 disciples and as bhim was eating here the shakuni has, had to go to answer nature's call again and again so this is also very beautiful leela from which we can uh, understand uh, of course there is lot of teaching behind it that yasmin tushte jagat tushte if the lord is satisfied then all the people of the world along with demigods and all other rishis they will be satisfied through this beautiful pastimes we can understand 
so this is the importance of offering food to the lord so whatever we cook whatever we eat we should first offer it to the lord or whatever new things we buy for ourselves we should offer it to the lord so that that will be purified and that purified uh, thing will purify us also so this is the mahima prasad so our guru maharaj param puja loknath goswami maharaj this is very nice thing anna para brahma that anna is para brahma it is none other than krishna and prasad means pra means prabhu sa means sakshat and da means darshan so prasad means prabhu ka sakshat darshan so this is also very nice teaching so whenever we are honoring any prasadam we are not telling uh, so when we are having prasadam we are not telling that i am eating prasad no we are saying i am honoring the prasad honoring means i am taking the prasad as the lord because as the lord is not different from his name so similarly the lord is also not different from his prasadam so and just by this means of prasadam we can you know uh, if some people are not ready to come to our satsang and take part in the process of devotional activities but if we give them prasad so so that will work and it really worked in my life and many other and in the and in many devotees life this prasadam so it's a very beautiful medium of preaching so especially the mata ji's and the ladies they can cook some nice delicacies at their home they can offer it to the lord and they can give to the neighbors and reach out to the people uh, so that they can have this prasadam and they can also uh um, take uh, get this opportunity in engaging the in service so to honor prasad is also a service and by honoring prasadam and to engage in lord's devotional activities is the greatest service which anyone can render so this is the yogeshwar the lord is also known as yogeshwar because he is the mystic he is the greatest greatest mystic of all that is hari krishna so we'll move on to the next verse text 12 यजसता भगवान्ूतिशूल पानीर्शा पिता सगीजो अस्त्र आद निज मे अन्चाहमून कलेवरेन प्रप्त महेन्द्र भवे न महत आसनाधम सिनोन सांस्कृतिक पपट वैश्व गोपाल जय श्ल गोपाल सांस्कृतिक पपट वैश्व गोपाल translation by shrila pappad jay shrila pappad it has by his influence only that in a fight i was able to astonish the personality of godhead god, god lord shiva and his wife the daughter of the mount himalaya thus he lord shiva became pleased with me and awarded me his own weapon other demigods also delivered their respect weapon uh, their respective weapons to me and in addition i was able to reach the heavenly planet in this present body and was allowed a half elevated seat purport by shrila prabhupad jay shrila prabhupad by the grace of the supreme personality of godhead shri krishna all the demigods including lord shiva were, were pleased with arjuna the idea is that one who is favored by lord shiva or any other demigod may not necessarily be favored by the supreme lord shri krishna ravana was certainly a great devotee of lord shiva but he could not be saved from the wrath of supreme personality of godhead lord ramachandra and there were and there were and there are many instances like that in the histories of puranas but here is an instance where we can see the lord shiva became pleased even in the fight with arjuna the devotees of the supreme lord know how to respect the demigods but the devotees of demigods sometimes foolishly think that the supreme personality of godhead is no greater than the demigods by such a conception one becomes an offender and ultimately meets with the same end as ravana and others the instances described by arjuna during his friendly dealing with lord shri krishna are instructive for all who may be convinced uh, convinced by the lessons that one can achieve all favors simply by pleasing 
the supreme lord shri krishna whereas the devotees or worshipers of the demigods may achieve only partial benefits which are also perishable just as the demigods themselves are another significance of the present verse is that arjuna the grace of lord shri krishna was able to reach the heavenly planets even with the self same body and was honored by the heavenly demigods indradev being seated with him half elevated one can reach the heavenly planets by the pious acts recommended in shastras in the category of fugitive uh, of fugitive fugitive activities and as stated in bhagavad gita 9.21 when the reaction of such pious acts are spent the enjoyer is again degard uh, degraded to his earthly planet the moon is also on the level with the heavenly planets and only persons who have performed virtues only performing sacrifices giving charity and undergoing severe atros uh, asurities can be allowed to enter into the heavenly planets after the duration of life of the body arjuna was allowed to enter the heavenly planet in the self same body simply by the grace of the lord otherwise it is not possible to do so the present attempts to enter into the heavenly planets by modern scientists will certainly prove futile uh, because such scientists are not a level of arjuna they are ordinary human beings without any assets of sacrifice charity or asuratis the material body is influenced by the three modes of material nature namely god goodness passion and ignorance the present population is more or less influenced by the modes of passion and ignorance and symptoms of such influences are exhibited in their becoming very lusty and greedy such degraded fellows can hardly approach the higher planetary system above the heavenly planets there are many other planets also which only those who are influenced by goodness can reach in heavenly and other planets within the universe the inhabitants are all highly intelligent many more times than the human beings and they are all pious in the higher and highest mode of goodness they are all devotees of the lord and although their goodness is not unadulterated still they are known as demigods possessing the maximum amount of good qualities possible within the material world jai shri la prabhupada hari krishna hari krishna bro thank you so much so again it is a very nice purport and the very nice verse where arjuna is remembering his readings with lord sri krishna and how he protected him how he protected dropati how he protected the pandavas and always besides them the lord was always favor favoring his dear devotees the pandavas because they were as dear to him as his own life so this is how the pandavas were dear to the lord and the lord used to always send some uh, vidura he used to always send akurura to astinapur to you know to always get the latest updates about the pandavas wealthy so during uh, after pandavas lost everything in the gambling match they have been given uh, 13 years of exile one was so during those 13 years uh, lord krishna uh, requested in 12 years of exile and one year of agyat vas that they have to live in incognito so they were acting as different different uh, they were taken different professions professions and they were li- living at that time so uh, since this uh, after the gambling match the pandavas knew that this duryodhan and the dhritarashtra will never favor them and being a kshatriya they have to rule the kingdom they have to inherit the kingdom also so that's why lord krishna guided them and other rishis vyasdev ji and other others guided him so that they can also do some tapasya 
in those uh, 12 years they can do some you know uh, they can do some warm up for this uh, yuddh the, the battle which is going to happen in future so lord krishna told arjuna and bhima to do, go and do tapasya and uh, in this way bhima pleased hanuman ji and that's why in the battlefield of kurukshetra kapi dwaj hanuman ji was present with the pandavas in the form of their flag so hanuman ji entered the flag of the pandavas so that's why bhima due to bhima this lord hanuman ji because bhima was also vayu putra and hanuman ji was also vayu putra so this was the both brothers uh, they you know had a joint venture to assist lord krishna uh, and in his mission of dharma samsthapana daya sambhavam yuga yuga on the other hand krishna also told arjuna to go and please lord shiva because lord shiva because by pleasing lord shiva he can get this beautiful astra called pashupata astra so arjuna goes in the forest and does tapasya and in that way pleases lord shiva and lord shiva along his wife parvati parvati means parvat ki putri the daughter of mount himalaya so that's why she is known as parvati parvat ki putri isliye parvati लाइक वी से द्रुपद की पुत्री द्रौपदी सो इन दिस वे शी वॉज नेम्ड आफ्टर हर फादर पर्वत की पुत्री पार्वती सो दे बिकेम दे वेर बोथ प्लेस विथ अर्जुना पार्वती एंड लॉर्ड शिवा एंड सिंस अर्जुना वॉज डूइंग तपस्या सो लॉर्ड शिवा गेव हिम वन अस्त्र कॉल्ड पशुपतास्त्र एंड नॉट ओनली डैट ऑल द डेमिगॉड्स थर्टी थ्री क्रोड डेमिगॉड्स दे गेव हिम they all give mantra to arjuna in the form uh, in the form of a weapon so that that can be utilized in the future war of the kurukshetra at that time they didn't know about the war of kurukshetra but they gave uh, but arjuna received all these mantras in the form of weapons from this all the 33 gods demigods and arjuna could also go in the uh, self sesam body self same body he he visited the heavenly planets and there since he was the putra of indra dev he got a half elevated seat why half elevated seat because on the king seat the indra was sitting and on the half elevated seat arjuna was given chance to sit and also it has been said that the heavenly apsara is known as urvashi so urvashi was quite attracted to arjuna but arjuna was not attracted to urvashi because arjuna was a great devotee of the lord and he was not interested in all this kind of things so because of that this urvashi gave him a curse that oh arjuna uh, you you th- uh, you think that you are you know you are a brave and a great kshatriya but since you are not respecting me so i'll give you a curse that you have to be uh, in one phase of life you will be as you will act like a eunuch right you know what uh, eunuch is so during that 12 years of exile and that one year of incognito agyatvas 12 sal ka vanvas agyatvas uh, sorry 12 sal ka vanvas exile during the 12 years of exile after that they used to hide and live uh, this pandava so uh, that one year is called agyatvas or living in incognito so at that time they have to you know scatter somewhere in the kingdom other kingdoms and they have to live uh, incognito so at that time arjuna was acting as brinala so she was acting as a eunuch and she was teaching the nritya kala the dancing art to uh, virat raj's uh, daughter her name was uttara okay who later became the wife of abhimanyu uttara and pradikshit maharaj is the son of uh, mother uttara and abhimanyu so so this uh, curse of urvashi was also acted as a benediction for this arjuna uh, in that one year of incognito secondly the lord krishna personally requested 
Arjuna to go and ask for this beautiful astra weapon called Pashupatastra from Lord Shiva. And this weapon was useful to him against the Jayadrat. So as we discussed that there were hundred sons of Kauravas, uh, hundred sons of Dhritarashtra, the Kauravas, hundred Kauravas, and Kaurava had one sister called Drishala. So Drishala's husband was Jayadrat. So he was the son-in-law of Dhritarashtra, Jayadrat. So Jayadrata has also pleased Lord Shiva after uh, it's a you know long story where Jayadrat once kidnapped Draupadi and and he was uh, taking her while they were in exile. Uh, Jayadrata was taking Draupadi with her. So then Pandavas came to know and Arjuna and Bhim, uh, you know, uh, they fought with uh, Jayadrat and they insulted him like anything and they were about to kill them but Yudhishthira Maharaj requested that he is our brother-in-law so don't kill him just humiliate him and let him go so because of that revenge and grudge enviousness Jayadrat went to Lord Shiva and did tapasya so that at least for one particular day they will Jayadrat will be uh, uh, nobody could defeat Jayadrat except except all. But uh, Lord Shiva gave him the benediction, yeah, at least for one day, uh, no, none of the Pandus will uh, they will not be able to harm you anything, with anything. So that is on that particular day where, where Arjuna was with Krishna and he went to some other place for uh, fighting. And these four Pandavas, Bhima, Yudhishthir, Nakul and Sahadev, they couldn't uh, fight against Jayadrat when Abhimanyu entered the chakra view. When Abhimanyu entered that particular chakra view and then everybody, as you know the story, then everybody with immoral principles, they defeated Abhimanyu and killed him. And at that time, Jayadrat was heavy on all the four Pandavas because Arjuna was not there. And he was also given a benediction by Lord Shiva that you can defeat all the four Pandavas, but not Arjuna. And by the will of providence, and uh, that Arjuna had to go to some other uh, area for fighting with Krishna. So that's why Arjuna was not present on the battlefield of Kukurikshetra on that particular day. And Abhimanyu, he knew how to breach the chakra view, uh, but to enter, but he didn't know how to come back. And in the meantime, all the Kauravas, uh, Drona, uh, Karna, Vikarna, Ashwadhamma, everybody, you know, with immoral principles defeated Abhimanyu and he killed Abhimanyu also. So when Arjun at the end of the day came to know that his son was killed and he, got, he, he could see his body. So Arjuna de decided and took a vow. First he asked his uh, uh, other brothers that why if you, for, you couldn't protect my son Abhimanyu. He was very dear to my heart. And then uh, uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj tells that this Jayadrat was heavy on us, except you, nobody can fight him. So, so that was the condition. Even Bhima couldn't fight Jayadrat. So in this way, uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj communicates just to Arjuna. And Arjuna, the way, uh, at the same time, he takes a vow that tomorrow either I will kill that Jayadrat or I will enter into the fire. So in this way, then the next day comes and the, the battle happens between Kauravas and Pandavas as usual. And the Jadrata was was very in the inside chambers where, you know, nobody can. He was covered with all the uh, many, uh, these great warriors and also so that Arjuna couldn't reach him. And Arjuna on that particular day, he took a ferocious form and he was killing all the soldiers of Kauravas like anything. And, but still, before the sunset, he couldn't reach Jayadrat. So the, the so the uh, uh, so so the, at, in those times they used to uh, play the uh, you know they used to fight till the sunset. After that sunset, the uh, the uh, it's a break time for them, and the next day they can fight. So this was a, a very nice pastime. And to cut it short, Lord Krishna, what he did. He covered the sun with the Sudarshan Chakra just few few minutes before the sunset. And then everybody came before Arjuna and the Pandavas and they were 
teasing Arjuna and Pandavas, and Arjuna was about to enter into the fire because he couldn't reach Jadrat and kill him. Then Krishna withdraws his Sudarshan Chakra from the sun, and uh, so earlier it was darkness because the uh, Sudarshan Chakra covered the sun, and then it was completely dark. But as uh, Krishna again removes the Sudarshan Chakra from the uh, in front of the sun, so again there is a light, there is a sun rays. So then Krishna tells Arjuna that is Jaidrat and that is sun. That is sun and that is Jaidrat, you can kill him. So that at that time Arjuna uses this Pashupatastra which was given by Shivji. And uh, Jaidrat was having one more benediction that Jiski Vajas Sebi Uska Mastak Zamin Pe Girega Uska Nash Hojaiga. That any person who dares to kill Jaidrat or his head if uh, Owing to owing to that person, uh, uh, Jaidra's head, if, if touches the ground, that will be burned to ashes. That, that was the benediction uh, his father gave to Jaidra. So Arjuna, he uses the Vashupatastra Astra in the form of a weapon, in the form of a bow, and he kills uh, Jaidra in such a way that uh, that uh, that Jaidra's neck was been pierced by his. Uh, a sharp arrow of Pashupadastra, and that particular head of Jadrat goes back long, reaches long mile, and it falls in the lap of his father. And as the father sees, as he was sitting on meditation and he was sitting like this, so as he sees his son's uh, head in, in on his lap, then he immediately uh, stands up, and because of that, he also gets killed. So, this was the plan of Lord Krishna to protect his dear friend Arjuna and all the Pandavas. So this was the very, very beautiful first time which comes in Mahabharata also. So we'll move on to the next verse, text 13. Tatraiva me viharto bhuja danda yugmam gandeva lakshanam arati vadaya devaha sendra srita yad anubhavitam ajamida tenaha madhya mushita purushe na bhumna translation prapad by Shla Prabhupada, Jai Shla Prabhupada. When I stayed for some days at as a great as a guest in the heavenly planet, all the heavenly demigods, including King Indradev, took shelter of my arms, which were marked with the Gandhiv rope bow, to kill the demon called Nivat Kavach, O King, descendant of Ajamir. At the present moment, I am bereft of the supreme personality of the Godhead, by whose influence I was so powerful. The heavenly demigods are certainly more intelligent, powerful and beautiful, and yet they had to take help of, from Arjun because of his Gandhi bow, which was empowered by the grace of Lord Krishna. The Lord is all-powerful, and by his grace, his pure devotee can be as powerful as he may desire, and there is no limit to it. And when the Lord withdraws his powers from anyone, he is powerless by the will of the Lord. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. So here also we can see in the last uh, verse also it has been explained that Arjuna went to the heavenly planets also because of Lord Indra, who was his father only, because Arjuna was the Amsha, uh, King Indra Dev. And uh, not only that, this he went to Indra Dev, you know, to assist his father because there was a demon called Nivarta Kavacha. So this was a very strong demon and in the history of scriptures we find that many many such instances when the demigods are not able to fight such uh, demons, powerful demons, then they have to take help from the uh, from the great warriors of the Prithvi Loka or the Bhu Loka. Like we see Maharaj Khatwang, we see um, um, in the 10th canto also Muchukunda is also example and here Arjun is exam Arjuna was also a great warrior of his time. So he was known as Gandhi Dhari Arjuna. The Arjuna who always carries his Gandhi bow which was as powerful as Arjuna. And just because of that Gandhi bow he was victorious everywhere and that was only by the mercy of Lord Sri Krishna that he was all powerful. And with this bow which was empowered uh, and as he was empowered with this bow by Lord Sri Krishna, he was always victorious over his enemies. 
so that's why in the bhagavad gita also we see arjuna's one's name is parantapa parantapa means who can give tapa to his shatru or uh, because of him uh, the enemies used to sweat like we say parantapa unke pasine chhut jate the because of arjuna's uh, shaurya his chivalry so this was uh, the arjuna and he was the great bowman of his time and this all opulences and all strength is given by the lord only so the lord has empowered arjuna so that he becomes a nimitta matra bhavya savya sachi so that he becomes a instrument in establishing the dharma and killing the demons and protecting the devotees and in this way he protected the pandavas from the kauravas and at last he established the dharma and just to establish that dharma lord gave him the power to arjuna which was required and as the lord departed from this uh bhuloka so the lord so arjuna uh, so the lord also took the power from the arjuna which was not required at that time so so this is the lord so when the lord desires something he will give us everything if the lord doesn't desires or if it is not required the lord will also take it so ultimately we should not be puffed up this with teaching we can take it from the lord if we have any opulence or any strength or any knowledge any art skill talent or whatever it is it is all because of the lord if we have it we will utilize in the service of lord only otherwise no problem we will be happy in whatever we have received and we will engage that same person in the service of the lord okay so we'll move on to our next verse text 14 यत बंधव कुरुबलाधीमतरेहमतीयसत्वत्यहरीतुधनमचयापरेशयशलाप्रोपाध्रांसलेशनप्रोपाध्रांसलेशनप्रोपाध्रांसलेशनप्रोपाध्रांसल
on the side of pandavas there were only seven akshayani senas and that was also uh, you know that was quite less as compared to the huge ocean like pandavas uh, kauravas sena but because lord krishna was present as the sarthi of arjuna arjuna was able to cross over it all they used they uh, fought with such a valor and chivalry that they could win over this kauravas so only because of lord krishna uh, they were able to you know uh, overcome or they became victorious at the end of battle and so this is again a dealing which instance where arjuna is remembering the lord generally in our life when somebody does good to others we appreciate but after that after that if uh, somebody unintentionally does bad to us then that thing we only remember right it is with me i don't know with all of you but generally it happens but here in the in that you know sad condition also when krishna left this world and arjuna was very sad so he is remembering that instances where the lord showered his mercy upon the pandavas and mother kunti and all of them so this is a beautiful teaching which we can also take home from this beautiful pastime of arjuna and krishna and that always remember krishna never forget krishna okay so whatever good is happening in us we should be grateful to the lord and we should be always mindful so always be grateful for what we have and be mindful for what we what we can become so this is a teaching with which we can take from arjuna and all the pandavas who were always sent person surrendered to the lotus feet of the lord and not only that arjuna could you know regain the cows which was taken by force along with the helmets of kings uh, which was uh, when the kauravas attacked the virata kingdom and they snatched this so what happened was as we discussed that the pandavas were living the 13th year in cognito agyatvas where they were hiding so there was one condition actually when the battlefield of uh, when the gambling match was over then this dhritarashtra told the pandavas to go for this 12 years of exile and one year of incognito and the condition was that when you are living as incognito in that one year period if we find you then are you again need to go for 12 years of exile so for the so for the pandavas the challenge was in that one year of incognito period they have to live like chup chup ke they have to live in disguise so that nobody can recognize them and and if somebody can recognize them from the kaurava side then again they need to go for 12 years of exile so this was a condition so that's why so especially on the 13th year all the kauravas for 12 years they were relaxed all the kauravas and maharaj shakuni and dhritarashtra and duryodhan and company but especially in the 13th year they were awake and they were looking for this pandavas in every nook and corner every nook and corner of the earth because at that time the hastinapur was the uh, uh, emperor kingdom so they were uh, hastinapur was the emperor kingdom and so they were finding this uh, uh, they were searching for pandavas in different different kingdoms so there was one virata kingdom where the pandavas went and took shelter of this virata king so that king's name was virata and later this king virata was also present in the battlefield of kurukshetra from the side of pandavas so during this incognito period which was before the war of kurukshetra so this king virata gave shelter to all the five pandavas and their wife draupadi so in that incognito period where everybody was living in agyatvas so they have to change their profession they have to change their dress so what they were doing maharaj yudhishthir was acting as a minister to maharaj virat bhimsen bhima was acting as the cook in the kitchen of virat they were acting and they were doing their duties maharaj yudhishthir was acting as a minister and used to give advice to the virat king bhimsen used to cook for you know the many soldiers uh, and for the king virat so in this way so bhim was uh, went to the charge of a cook and 
Arjuna was acting as a eunuch in teaching the Nritya Kala, the dance art to the daughter of uh, Maharaj Virat, whose name was Uttara. So Maharaj Virat had two kids, one is son Uttar and the daughter Uttara. And Nakul and Sardev, so Nakul was uh, very expert in taking the care of cows. So in the care of Nakula, the cows were, you know, very happy and flourishing. And Sardev, in his care, the horses were always very happy. So Nakul Sardev, I, I, yeah. And Draupadi, the queen of the Pandavas, she was living as an Dasi to the Virat's wife, who was the queen. So this this was the this were the roles of all the Pandavas when they were living as incognito. So Maharaj Shakuni Shakuni the the Mama Shri or the uncle-in-law of the Kauravas, he utilized his brain to the fullest. So now he was thinking that in order to find the Pandavas, we need to see how the progress is going on. For example, we need to search for a particular uh, area, for example, a, a kingdom of a particular king, in whose kingdom, so uh, in this way, he was, you know, having the map in front and then uh, this Shakuni was contemplating with the Duryodhana that recently we need to see that which particular uh, king has made so many friends with the friendship with the neighboring kingdoms. So then they could see Virata because in the recent time, this Virata has made friendship with the different neighboring kings. So Shakuni thought maybe Yudhishthir must be present to give the good advice there. So that's why the Virata is making friendship with the others. Then he thought in which kingdom the cows are, are very happy and you know uh, uh, it's flourishing the kingdom. So then again, uh, they came to know that it is Virat because in Virat, these cows were flourishing nicely. Then again, they thought in whose kingdom the horses are flourishing and you know, they are happy. So again, they came to know it is Virat. So from this clues, they understood that this Pandava should be in the Virat kingdom. Because although they have changed the profession, but by their good behavior, good attitude, you know, these qualities, because of these qualities, everybody could find it out. Because as a flower, even the flower is inside the forest, but still it will distribute fragrance to the nearby trees. So similarly, the Pandavas were such personalities. And because of this, this Shakuni thought, yeah, so Virat is the kingdom where the Pandavas have taken shelter. And then they approached Virat a king to check this out, but they couldn't. And then uh, they finally decided to stole the cows and they have stolen all the cows from the Virata kingdom. And then Arjuna, uh, just on the last day of the incognito period, Arjuna then went along with uh, uh, this Uttar, uh, the son of Virata, and he fought with the Pandavas from a distance place so that nobody can uh, see him. And in that way, he regained all the cows and the jewels uh, and the uh, valuable items which were also stolen. So he brought it back for, for the king Virata because unka namak kha rahe So that's why it was their duty, it was their responsibility to protect the Virat kingdom. So in this way, Arjuna was also victorious at that time when he fought with the uh, Pandavas incognito. And in this way, Arjuna remembers this instance also that although we are in great difficulty, but by the uh, mercy of the Lord, we were all victorious and we could uh, save the cows for the King Virat. Next verse. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um... Yes, please. Prabhu, thoda, in, in the interest of time, uh, you need to go a bit fast because just four minutes are remaining and four more verses are remaining. Yes, Prabhuji. I will not read now purports because the purport is quite long. So I will read the translation and I will give the synopsis of it in the next five minutes, Prabhu. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you. Text 15. 
जो भीष्मकर्ण गुरु शाल्य कंसु अदभ्र राजन्य वर्य रथमंडल मद मदिताशु अग्रेचरो मम विभो रथ युता पनाम आयुर ममसी चतुष स ओज अर्ह च ट्रांसलेशन श्लोक रूपात जय श्लोक रूपात इट इज हू ओनली इट वॉज ही ओनली हू विड्रॉ द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ लाइफ फ्रॉम एवरी वन एंड हू इन द बैटल फील्ड withdraw the speculative power and the strength of enthusiasm from the great military strengths made by kauravas headed by bhishma karna drona salya etc their arrangement was expert and more than adequate but he lord krishna while going going forward did all this so arjuna comes uh, at the instance of the battlefield of kurukshetra where krishna was present with him as a chariot driver and just by the guidance of krishna arjuna was Arjuna and all the Pandavas were fighting the war accordingly, and because of the guidance and mercy of Krishna, of course, Narayana Sena Sena was also there on the side of the Kauravas, but still Krishna was acting as the uh, counselor, uh, mentor to uh, to guide the Pandavas in to how to uh, prepare the chakra view and how to break it the military phalanx. Uh, phalanx. So in this way, at that time only. Uh, even though bhishma was there karna was there drona and shalya all the powerful and maharathis were there but still arjuna remembers that even though they they were present like the great strong, strong mountains but arjuna could pierce through them and uh, because of the krishna's uh, proper guidance they were expert and then more adequate and they came victorious above all of them so even though they were all like strong big fishes but still by the guidance of uh, krishna arjuna and all the pandavas you know took charge of all the great leaders and he fought with them and came out victorious next verse text 16 yad doshu ma pranihitam guru bhishma karna na prit na pritra trigarta shalya sendava bahila kade astrani amoga mahimani nirupitani no पाश प्रशूर नर हरि दाशमी वा शुरानी ट्रांसलेशन पश्चिम रूपा जय श्री रूपा ग्रेट जर्नल्स लाइक भीष्म द्रोण कर्ण भूरिश्रव सुशर्मा शाल्या जयद्रथ एंड बालिका ऑल डायरेक्टेड देयर इन इनविजिबल वेपन्स वेपन्स अगेंस्ट मी बट बाय हिज लॉर्ड कृष्णा ग्रेस दे कुड नॉट इवन टच अ हेयर ऑन माय हेड सिमिलरली प्रलाद महाराज द सुप्रीम ड्यूटीज ऑफ लॉर्ड नरसिंह देव वाज अनअफेक्टेड बाय द वेपन्स द डीमन्स यूज्ड अगेंस्ट हिम so as we you know in the previous was also did discuss that against the arjunas his friends were there his brothers were there his fathers were there like bhurishrava his guru were there like dronacharya and his brother in law was also there as jayadrath as we discussed earlier so all those were present so arjuna initially was distressed because of you know fighting against their own king's men but even though uh, they were you know uh, uh, fighting with them but arjuna was always thinking of krishna and he he was fighting with them and just by the grace of krishna those weapons of those maharathis the powerful weapons couldn't even touch because bhishma dev and karna were using their topmost weapon weapons to you know to finish arjuna but by the grace of krishna nobody could even touch the hair और कोई उनका बाल भी बाका नहीं कर पा रहा था अर्जुन का हाउ सो ही गिव्स द एग्जांपल ऑफ प्रहलाद महाराज अर्जुन गिव्स द एग्जांपल ऑफ प्रहलाद महाराज दैट हाउ डिफरेंट वेपन्स वेयर बीन थ्रू व्हिच प्रहलाद महाराज वाज अटैक्ड बाय द इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ हिज फादर हिरण्यकश्यप बट ही वाज ऑलवेज प्रोटेक्टेड बाय नरसिंह देव सिमिलरली इन द मिड्स ऑफ दैट बैटलफील्ड ऑफ कुरुक्षेत्र देयर वेयर डिफरेंट weapons were approaching me but by the lord mercy of the lord krishna nobody could even touch me and i was victorious over all those weapons so this was the mercy of krishna so in this way he was counting the great instances in which lord krishna helped him to achieve this perfection shautyavrata kuma kumati natma daishwaro me yat pad padma abhava viya bhajanti bhavya मम श्रांत वहम आरायो रथिनो भूविस्ताम न प्रहरन यद अनुभव निरस्त चित्त ट्रांसलेशन बाय श्लोक रूपा जय श्लोक रूपा इट वाज बाय हिज मर्सी ओनली दैट माय एनिमीज नेग्लेक्टेड टू किल मी व्हेन आई डिसेंडेड फ्रॉम माय 
chariot to get water for my thirsty horses and it was due to my lack of esteem for my lord that i dared engage him as my chariot driver for he worshiped and offered services by the best men to attain salvation so now arjuna is again taking a very humble position and counting the mercy and the kripa of the lord one by one so when arjuna you know uh, get out of the chariot to you know to feed a uh, water Uh, to get water for these thirsty horses nobody attacked him and it was only by mercy of the krishna because they were in the dharma yuddha kauravas but still they were taking some you know immoral tricks to uh, to become victorious against the enemies but still by the mercy of krishna nobody could even touch them uh, when arjuna was off the chariot and arjuna is also taking a very humble position and he is thinking that the lord who is been worshiped by all the best people and offered best services to attain liberation to that lord i am i appointed as a chariot driver and i am asking him to run this chariot oh it is my lack of esteem so in this way he is you know criticizing himself and glorifying the lord but still he was so merciful that he acted as my chariot driver final verse for today नर्माणि उदार रुचिर स्मित शोभिता ये पार्थे हे अर्जुन सखे कुरु नंदने संजलिता नरदेव हृदय स्पृशा स्मर्तुर्लुता हृदय मम माधव से constitution by shila prabhu ji shila prabhu pad oh king his joking and frank talks were pleasing and beautifully decorated with smiles his address addresses unto me as oh son of pritha oh friend oh son of puru de dynasty and all such heartiness are now now remembered by me and thus i overwhelmed so in this way arjuna brings this final verse in front of mara yudhishthir the final realization in front of mara yudhishthir that oh maharaj king yudhishthir how he used to joke with me mere sath has paryas karte the he used to have jokes with me uh, and uh, he used to smile so nicely uh, and it was very much pleasing to my heart and sometimes he used to address me oh pritha putra hey kunti putra oh my friend hey sakha oh my oh son of kuru dynasty that hey kuru nandana and sometimes in many instances in the bhagavad gita we see the lord used to call him dhananjaya because he acquired wealth for the yagya of mara yudhishthir and in this way krishna was also addressing him in different different names so that he can you know establish his strong connection with arjuna and in this way arjuna was remembering him and was crying and he was overwhelmed with the grief stricken he was grief stricken why because now krishna is no more present and he is in separation with the lord so this is the separation which arjuna is feeling here and he is still remembering so this is the wonderful teaching which we can take away that even though we are in greatest calamities of life even though we are suffering like like pralad maharaj but still if we will remember then definitely the lord narsim they will come similarly arjuna was also remembering the lord in his difficult times here when he is not there but just by instruct by meditating upon the dealings of the lord with him and the other pandavas he was you know uh, feeling happy uh for those beautiful time which the lord has given and he used to count those blessings in the form of assets in front of mara yudhishthir hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare thank you so very much and sorry since the purport were long and there was so much to speak i went quite ahead of the time but thank you so very much if you have any comments and questions we can take it thank you thank you thank you. thank you so much uh any question anyone has no it all it was history prof yeah okay sumati mata ji sunita mata ji unai uday prabhu prasanna prabhu anybody any question uh, nothing no. okay great thanks thanks a lot prabhu sorry i joined late i could not introduce you hare krishna no problem prabhu you were also in some different class i can really understand but thank you so much after the class also you managed to join in if uh, if you and other devotees want to add some realization on this we uh, we can
take two three minutes and we can add problem. Now that's so the one problem. thing. Ah, so one yes. thing which I could understand uh, is basically now uh, it is mainly glorifying the Lord and uh, how Arjuna remembered him to glorify him uh, based on whatever he after the uh, going away of Krishna. I thought this was mainly to glorify him and tell what and all uh, he did and how we should also follow something similar to Arjuna. Is that a good understanding? Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Because you know he is he is counting his blessings as we discussed earlier. Because since Krishna is now no more in front of his eyes, so he is just counting that small small blessings. He is remembering those incidents so that you know he will have some joy in his heart. And in that way, just by meditating and uh, you know uh, contemplating on those dealings with Krishna, that sorrow which is you know burning his heart that he can overcome. And he can also become happy. And in the future verses, we can see that he will uh, meditate upon the instructions of the Gita also, which Lord Krishna tells him on the battlefield of Purukshetra. So in this way, he is giving us an example that if in this way, if we we'll remember him, uh, the Lord, at our every phase of life, then we can also uh, overcome that particular fear or that particular suffering. Because Jaha Krishna Taha Nahi Mayara Prakash. So Krishna is Surya Sam Maya Andhakar, Jaha Surya Tahanai, Maya Radhikar. So when there is Krishna, there is no question of uh, Maya. So similarly, when there is a sun, so there is no question of darkness. So similarly, when Krishna is there, then we will not have these sufferings. Even though suffering is inevitable, but to suffer is in our hands. So that choice we can make like Arjuna and we can be happy at the end of it. Right, Krishna. Hare Krishna. So Hare point, Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. I'll just add one point here. So uh, there have been quite a few um, times wherein Arjuna behaved very, very in a friendly manner with uh, Krishna. And that also he is repenting. And it is not only that at this point that he is uh, repenting upon it, but he realizes his mistake even during Bhagavad Gita also. So in uh, 11th chapter, there is one verse where Arjun says, Yachava Hasartha Masat Kurutosi. Now he says that, uh, Hey Krishna, Hey Yadav, Hey Saketi. He says that there have been many times wherein I have, you know, called you, uh, Hey Krishna, Hey Yadav, Hey Saketi. Okay. okay, meaning not realizing actually who you are. We have had uh, food from one single plate, we have slept on a single bed. Okay, not realizing that you are the supreme. So then uh, that also he is feeling a little bit sad about that, you know, how could I behave with the Supreme in this particular manner? So that also is coming out. There is another perspective wherein he is now experiencing the situation where Lord was with them and compares with the situation where the Lord has departed. And any and every power that he possessed at the during the presence of Lord which is now feeling uh, a lack of during at the time of absence, he is comparing that situation and he is also realizing that anything and everything that I had was only because of the Lord. So, uh, you know, a question can arise: uh, What is so? What is so much a problem in calling Krishna as Krishna or Yadav? Anyway, he was Yadavanshi, na, right? So Yadav, bolne mein ya Saketi, you know, friend, me bolne mein kya problem hai? So, uh, we need to understand the uh, civil situation at that time. So, what uh, there used to be uh, a kind of a hierarchy among people. So, the kings, the Kshatriyas used to be uh, administering the whole kingdom and the others like Pradhans, Yadavs and all that, they used to be Senapatis and commanders and all that you know, serving the, uh, the ultimate king. So even if a Yaduvanshi, a Yadav, or even if he is a king of his own kingdom, still he used to be a kind of a subservient to the, the main king of the province. So Yadav was considered to be an inferior in terms of hierarchy compared to the actual, the main king. So Pandavas were like the main kings. And for them, Yadav was a second grade kind of person 
or a you know clan so calling a hey, yadav is like you know calling somebody in a very kind of a derogatory manner in, with the intention being derogatory so i say wo uh, uh, arjun used to call him sometimes krishna in fun but despite that krishna never said are yaar i am the supreme karke so all that he he remembered in bhagavad gita times also and now he is remembering that also so wo ek another perspective hai iska hari krishna hari krishna bro thank you so much hari krishna one nice. one small doubt before we close uh, sorry sachin uh, i i just wanted to understand now uh, where the did the pandavas not know that it was the lord before he went away so uh, the actual uh, lord meaning that he was he revealed during the bhagavad gita time only but uh, meaning in the 11th canto of shrimad bhagavatam after the whole battle was over and everything was done uh, that is uh, when um, and at the time of you know passing of bhishma dev also after the battle was over bhishma dev revealed this information to them tab yudhishthir ko pata chala fir the yaduvanshis like vasudev and all that they came to know again after the battle was over so the lord was expert in hiding his original identity whenever required uddhav understood a, quite a long back but some of the people did not understand until the law re- revealed at the right time of r- right time so at this point of time they had understood who he was karke yeah but not earlier than that okay thanks thanks hare krishna prabhu sorry hare krishna thank you sorry hare, sorry sorry for taking such a long time hare krishna thank you all for joining see you next week krishna thank you Keshavar Shri thank you so much for taking the class today Hare Krishna Dandav Pranam thank you thank you so much too for the opportunity thank you very much please forgive thank me thank you folks Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.